What's going on, everybody? You are here with the St. Lucia. We got Peter in the background there behind Weiner's head. Oh, shoot, there he is. He's eating some pork. Chunker. Like a typical uh, Chinaman. He's very ethnic today. They, they eat so much meat, man. It is ridiculous. And bok choy. Oh, the Chinese broccoli? Yeah, it's not Chinese broccoli. It's like Chinese celery, broccoli, love affair. Pete, is that Chinese broccoli or is that different? <laughs> All right, so we are here to discuss, Weiner and I are here to discuss the trade that we were able to make in Google uh, where we, instead of buying a call, okay, on Google, we're going to show this to you in a second. Instead of buying a call on Google, um, you know, to play the breakout here, and you're, you're going to see a chart which he broke out from, uh, you know, 1070 uh, uh, up to about 1090 today. Instead of buying a call, which which I normally would have done. Right. My crazy ass, right? Right. Instead of doing that, I wrote a put, okay? I wrote a put. I wrote this 1080 put. So I'm going to show you right now. And the reason why I wanted to do this is you're going to see as soon as you take a look at it. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do this was because I always envisioned, uh, you know, somehow pulling some, some solid premium out of a particular option uh, and then just kind of riding it until it expires here. So let's see... Uh, Let's take a look at this option. So this is our 1080 put that we wrote on the Google. Now, on the open on Monday, the stock was trading at about uh, 1070. Stock was trading about 1070. We'll show you chart on Google in a second. Uh, stock's trading about 1070, and this option is worth, remember, it's Monday. This is a weekly option. This option is worth, as you can see, 15 bucks. Fluctuated around like 15 to 13, around 14. You can see I had a bit of a window, like about five minute, five minute window here to really get my options. So the idea here was to basically write this option, okay, write this option at 14 and change, or however high I could get on this thing, okay, however high I could get on this thing, and and eventually just 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 take this thing all the way down to zero. Okay, now as you can see, the option is trading closed today at about four bucks. Uh, so obviously, you know, we, we've been able to pull in some serious cash since then. Now, some of the issues that we had going along was how to hedge the position overnight, number one, and then how to deal with some of the daily fluctuations in this thing. You know, shit, are we putting hedges on? You know, what's going on as we're uh, uh, slowly moving in this thing? And and you know, are we even still right on this? Okay. So essentially, what are the steps here? And then, and then we'll ask Brian here to 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 kind of clarify a couple of things. You know, he kind of looks kind of looks a bit stalkerish in there. I'm very stocky. A bit stalkerish in there. Yeah. Okay. Either way. So. And stocky. Okay. So, uh, 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 what are they? What, what what were we talking about here? What was I saying? So you have to wonder why did you buy the uh, why, why didn't you buy the 1080 calls versus selling the 1080 puts? Okay, right. How Sorry come I that. didn't? Okay. Why so, didn't you get along the 10 seconds? Okay, okay. So let's let's talk theory here for a second. Okay, Let, let's talk theory here for a second. Now, let's say I bought the calls, okay? And what I'm going to do for you guys is, is, is just pull up a, uh, you know, just that particular call and show you some of the things that I would have had to deal with, okay? But the reason why, the ultimate reason why... Uh, was that number one? I want to try something different because because when we scale up to let's say five mil cash, right? Let's say we all of a sudden have unlimited leverage. You know, I can't I can't put a million bucks on a Google option. Well, it, I mean, I can't put a million bucks on a Google option, right? But I can put a million risk down writing the put, writing the in the money put. At least that's how I thought it through. Maybe you might have some other way to 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 explain that. Well, it's a matter of, okay, we get to the price that you want to get at, which is, say, okay. 1090. 1090, whatever it is, okay. okay. Now, what happens when you get to 1090? And the problem that we face is how we deal with chop. Right. And if there's chop, right. there's time decay, right? So you're thinking, you know, maybe you get to 1090, but you're not really sure in this time frame where Google's going to go by, say, Friday. Right. So... If you're unsure, that triggered something in your head. Yes. And Absolutely. you were like, well, I don't want to do with this chop and this decay on the premium. All right. So selling was the right thing to do, selling a put. Selling a put that was juicy enough okay. that it had enough delta where you made money on the move up. 
Okay. So you're not going to sell, say, a 10.65, a 10 half put. You're not going to sell a crap put that when we go up, you're not going to make money on that premium shrinking. The premium shrinking because the delta goes from your delta was like a 75 or 80 delta, right. and now it's like a 30 delta, right. which in fact it is. And so you're making money on the, on the stock going up by the delta shrinking down and the premiums coming off. Right. So, and now you're in a good situation because we might be chopping the rest of the week. Chopping the rest of the week. And, and so you don't have to again. hope and pray exactly. it stays up exactly. and it keeps going up. You just care that it doesn't go below 10 e. Exactly. So what he's talking about essentially in my words, right, is 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 the, the sentiment here. And and the, the situation that you're dealing with when you are strapped to a price of an option and you're just letting it kind of work for you. So in this case, we have two different options. Let me show you this other option right here. So now you guys will see if uh, you know the 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 difficulty essentially on doing both at the same time here. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so now you're taking a look. You're taking a look at the 1075 weekly call on Google. Okay, now this essentially would be an example of one of the options that I would buy in this scenario. Okay, versus doing what I did, what as you know, writing the $15 uh, uh, put. Okay, now. Explain to me, I mean, let me just ask you guys this. I mean, what do you think is easier? Do you think it's easier to buy this option and hold it until maybe you sell at 18? Okay? Or do you think it's easier to write of the, the in this example, let's say it's easier, do you think it's easier to write the $15 put? Okay, and let's just show that option again. Okay, let's go uh, where 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 are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh where is she? Where is she? Where is she? I mean, we're we're also dealing we're dealing with. Do you want to sit on time decay, right? Or do you want right, to enjoy time decay coming off the rush? So, so do you think it's easier? Okay, and and I know the answer obviously because I, I already did this. But do you think it's easier? And, and there's a chat box there. You can put it in that chat box. Do you think it's easier to short this put and book fifteen dollars of premium, or okay, or play this wild crazy? Nazi call, okay, where you're strapped to the price of this thing every single second. I mean, look at the pullbacks on this thing, okay? I'm just looking at it from the delta trader perspective, right? Who has to sit there and look at his PL, go from what? Up 50 grand, now, no, look, oh my God, now I'm down, you know, now I'm it's, only at 10 grand, now, holy shit, I'm up 100 grand, shit, I forgot to book it, and now I'm looking at it up 50 grand. Right, you know? and so the other chart of the short put is much smoother. Much smoother. Much this is not smooth. The spikes are – there's delta spikes and there's vol spikes, people wanting to buy these calls. Maybe they're short them. Maybe they want to ride the wave of Google going up. Right. But there's spikes in volatility, whereas when you're short the put, the spikes aren't as significant. Uh, maybe people are buying the puts as protection for the stock, but the time decay is smoothing it out. Right. So when you see right. – the Google calls dipping right. down. Right. It's delta and vol coming off. Exactly. Exactly. Because you have guys that buy the Google calls and lift the vol up, and then they drop it down. Right. And time decay is smoothing right. those short puts out. And and again, like guys like me personally, who who don't even think about deltas or any of this stuff. Uh, you know, we're we're looking at it at a, at, a, at a pure price vantage point, right? I mean, what's going on on my tape? I mean, that's all I'm looking at. So all I'm looking at all day long is what's going on on my time and sales, my level two. What is what is what is what is going on here? Do I have a trade here? And is this thing still bullish? Okay, that's that's essentially what I'm looking at here. Now, there's a different way of looking at these things, a different way to explain these things, a different way to go about it. Okay, and and I'm slowly learning this through uh, you know through Weiner being around and and uh, and Heim being around and and a lot of the other team that we've 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 created over the years. So let's switch here real quick and let's talk about uh, the hedge here. Okay. Now there was a, there was a couple things that we did to hedge from uh, last night. Okay. There was a couple things that we did to hedge from last night. What we did was we shorted we shorted um, some calls. We shorted some calls against the position, uh, and then we also bought some puts. Right. Okay. Right. And this is a, another margin. So when you're right. a smaller guy, right. you have limited margin. Lucci's book is a bit bigger, so he can deal with. Uh, not having his brokerage call him and complain that he needs to put more money up. Be like, yo, 
you put yeah, more money up. You have a lot of risk on. So, um, you bought what? So you bought some. What was the strike on the puts? Okay, so the strike on the puts. The strike on the puts were the ten seventy. So at that time, okay. we were we were again short the ten eighties, but we went long the ten seventy price. Right. To so you put on a you were short a ten dollar wide put right. spread. Right. The same amount of contracts. How many same. Contracts? No, no, no. They were they were about they were about thirty or forty Fine. contracts. So you, you hedged right. half of your short position. Half of the thing because we also had the short calls. Well. Right. And so you sold calls yes. and the so and the short calls right. helps against time decay overnight exactly. by long, being long these puts. Exactly. Right. right. And it, and also like you know if we dip down there is a delta in those and you make some money off that move as well. Right. So. Um, One of the issues, by the way, in the morning when we when I made the call, I made the call in the morning, by the way, to gut the to gut the hedge completely, right. gut the hedge completely because my tape looked good and it looked like Google was going to scream. Right. So I gut the hedge, but you know, even though that I'm shorting calls overnight, right, to to uh, uh, book in some of that time decay and everything, the spread off the open almost mitigated that. That advantage. You need to, you know, what you need to do, and what I do yeah. is you put in some phantom bid, okay, and then sometimes there are guys that have market orders on the open, right, and they just want to, and they just, they want to, they want to buy calls, right, they want to sell calls, right. they want to buy puts or whatever, right. So you put in these wide bids and offers, okay, and you might get hit on them. If you right. don't, then you figure it out from there, okay. But you know, on the open, that's when a lot of the action happens, right, right. and you get right. out of your hedge right. generally. I mean, the issue is, guys, when you see any of these big uh, widespread options open, like the Googles and the price lines and all that kind of stuff, remember, like, they're, everybody's still trying to figure out and account for what happened in the overnight, the gap, and everything. So the liquidity is very light, very light, extremely light, so much so that there'll be such a widespread, and you'll be like, uh... Well, here's the, the deal. Do do? The stock is quite wide. Yeah. On the open, you right. might have a $5 wide move. Right. So the market makers and the option, they don't have a requirement to be so tight until right. a certain period of time after the open. Right. So the open wide spreads are going to, they're going to be wide. They're not going to be tight unless they have something to do. Right. 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 So you need to take advantage of maybe there's a market order and you are maybe a little tighter than, than an actual market maker is and you might get hit on your short calls. Okay. Here's the deal. You're selling the calls. Yeah, if we puke you're gonna make some money on those calls. You're gonna make some money on the calls and the long puts. And the long puts. Right. But really, you're selling the calls right. to counteract the decay that you make that you're on giving that, up on on the, the long exactly. 1070 puts. Exactly. And that's right. what you're doing that for. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. At what point does this get so confusing that you can't manage all the separate different hedges? Is there something to be said about over hedging? Is there anything to be said about over hedging? Well, I mean, hedging. You could, you could, if you hedged, if you say like a simple hedge, just selling Google stock against your short puts. Right, right, right. right. And then you're hedging. Now you're in a volatility position. Okay. Right. And if we go up, well, now you're short gamma. Right. Okay. So your hedge is losing money. Okay. So what you did was probably the the best thing you could do because your dream is for it to gap up yes and then your premium shrink premium just disappears right. right 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 and so you don't mind losing money in the 1070 puts no not at all the 10 the the 11 what was the call the the 1085 the 1085 the 1085 calls, 1085 calls. Right. those were kind of meaty those were very meaty those were kind of meaty very meaty right they're, so they're very meaty. so what you actually from Friday, yeah oh you have those from Friday that, that's Pete on the couch right there. Pete on the couch. Yeah, fucking yelling and shit. So there's a there's a fine line between Delta and Vega, and you need to have an idea in your head. What price do you think that if you sold some upside calls that have a Delta as your hedge to your puts, that if you start losing money on those calls, right. well, your puts, the 1080 puts that you sold, they're gonna lose a bunch more money in the premium, so you're gonna kind of even those two trades out. Right. 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 right, right. So the 1085s were actually pretty risky. Yes. You yeah, know, luckily, if there was a big gap up move, yeah, you would have lost money on that trade. Right. 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 right, right. And so you need it in your head. We're in looking at the tape or looking at the at the market profiling there is a, a good point where there's going to be decent resistance and you kind of don't mind it going up there because most likely that's going to be the cap for the day and okay. you're going to be able to buy your calls back 
little bit later. So the the hedge is risky. Sometimes it's the riskier thing. Yeah, yeah. Just like sometimes the hedge makes you the most money. Right, right. And we've experienced both actually. Right. You know, both sides of things. And that, and and it leads me to the point that. You know, at the end of the day, you don't you don't really know. You don't really there's know. No perfect hedge. There's no perfect hedge. You know, you're gonna come in in the morning. There could be some crazy gap up. I mean, look at this Mastercard after hours, guys. You'd think just announced a share buyback or something. This damn thing's up 20 points right Holy now. Holy moly! Um, really? You know, so who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen overnight? Now, here's the last question: Why didn't we hedge today? How come we didn't hedge today? But we did kind of, right? We hedged with these 1105 calls. So explain that hedge. All Whoa. right, so guys, we're gonna we're gonna pull over this. Uh, this quick uh, uh, level two here of Let's this. Let's see what 1105, the delta in 1105. So. Okay, so we have this 1105 call, which we chose to uh, write, which we chose to write uh, for the overnight to hedge against the Google position. Now, obviously, we didn't take a full hedge here. This is only 25 contracts. Uh, this 1105 call is on, uh, you know, the stock is what, 1084. It's Wednesday. We got about right. 20 points left. There's not that much of a hedge. There's not in that those. much of a hedge. It's a 12 reality, delta, right? So, so, so in actuality, in actuality, you're kind of you're legging into a strangle. Okay. You like to call them. You're you're wrapping both sides. A short strangle, yeah. You're so we're wrapping both sides. You're wrapping both sides. I mean, ideally, Google doesn't move up tremendously. Right. If it right. doesn't. You're going to get some decay overnight. You're probably going to get right. 30 cents of decay. Right. It's a number that pops in my head in right. your puts. Right. Right. Okay. If we go up a dollar, the delta says that you're going to lose 12 cents right. on your short calls. Right. I mean, they're they're worth about 95 cents. You're going to get about 12 cents in decay as well on that. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be neutral, and you're going to make money on your short puts the short and the puts. delta. Okay. Right. So I mean, psychologically. It helps you out, but if there's a big gap up move, right, that's dangerous. That's just, it is dangerous. Right, right, right. Um, and it doesn't really help you on the downside. Is right, the, is the thing. Right. So you're actually getting into a short string, which might not even be that bad because right. it, is Google going to go is to right. 1105? I mean, right. how much stock do you think is at 1100 in Google? Probably. I feel like right. there's more yeah. than a, more than you think. Right. Definitely true. You true. know, true. So it's not that 1105 is actually a good. Good place to go. 1090, not a good place. Right. If you're afraid of a gap up, you guys aren't that afraid of a gap no. down. No, no, no. You might think there might be a, a move to up. the upside, right. and that's why you got into the puts. Right. Right. So I think the level of fives, you know, you're gonna collect some good decay from right. Tuesday, but Tuesday get, to Wednesday. Could get that. Could get that. But you only have 25. True. So true. You're gonna make some money. I true. think you're gonna make some money on both. So guys, I mean, you know, for myself. Having been a trader who's never hedged anything in his freaking life, right? It's exciting. Never hedged anything, okay? And and this is until recently. This is these are all new developments, you know. And as a trader who is now slowly advancing to a, a, a new level, a different level, there is value in protecting what you've done, right? I mean, how many times have you guys who are Delta guys who can't uh, short options, let's say, how many times have you guys let a profit go against you? I mean, you know, every single one of you guys in here are probably going to be raising your hands, right? I mean, there's so many people who have who have made, let's say, 50 grand or up 50,000 in a position and and buried it and lost it. Uh, I've done that countless times. I mean, right. I can't even I can't even tell you how many times I've been long or or up 400 That's grand. That's why I love you. 400 grand, 300 grand, right. not take it, not done anything about it, and saw it just disappear. Right. Just disappear. That's and why reading that tape is so important, right? Especially right. at the end of the day, right? True, true, true. But again, it's then there's emotions. When you're talking about all that money, now your the, the trading emotions come alongside, and all that kind of bullshit comes alongside to 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 you know to to to, to ruin that sort of that trade and everything. And what you guys did yesterday was actually good because you didn't hedge the whole thing with the ten seventies. You hedged like half, right? You know, and that's the thing. Right. If you if you lock in. Half. You're not locking with the 1070s, but say you sold stock right. last night. You're, in, I mean, you're short. So if you're, sh if you, you lock, if you hedge a long position, it's kind of locked in. Right. You know, especially if you're up a 90 delta call, okay. you're locked in. You want it to go higher, but you lock some of it in. That's locked in. You taking some off the board. And in the morning, if it's sitting right there, you can you can take the hedge off. You know, when you're dealing with you know short calls. It's not locked in, but it's somewhat hedged. Right. You know, there's just not 
there's different hedges if you're long an option or you're short yeah. an option. Right. Right. You know, and it's, it's right. it, nothing's perfect. Right. So you know, this is a world again that I'm slowly starting to learn. And to me, like I still have that pride to be like, no, I don't want to hedge this because I want my full. I want my full shebang here, you know, and that's always been my beef, right? right? And we go back to these calls that we're going to show you here on the, on the, um, you know, on that call that let's say I would have bought. This is exactly what would have happened if I owned these things. Let's say I bought a hundred at maybe seven bucks, okay? Let's say I bought a hundred of these calls at seven bucks, right? Right. And I'm looking at the fact that it hit eighteen dollars, and let's say I didn't get the sell, right? I'm looking at my P and L. It's up maybe like a hundred and forty grand. Okay, didn't take the 140 grand, waited for it to come back. It looked like it was going to keep going. I'm still holding, right? You're like, I'm not going to do it. I'm this still time holding, again. I'm not selling, and then boom, all of a sudden, close it, close it at 12 bucks. So now I'm looking at a $140,000 profit that all of a sudden came down to about 60,000, 60, right. and now I'm hating the world, and I'm still waiting for it to go back up there. Because I'm still thinking, like, I'm still right in the trade, so let me go ahead and do this. But now you got to deal with time decay. Now you got to deal with with all this other bullshit. So now you've effectively lost your exit. You couldn't get that max profit, and you don't want to hedge because you're too proud because you want to get that money back. You're, right? You're getting greedy. Exactly. So so now that that really gives you the idea on what I'm trying to do with this other trade here. Okay. So we bring about this other trade here. Okay. And again, we're coming back to this uh, this this right option here. I can write a hundred of these. Okay, I can write 100 of these, I can write 200 of these. Right. And I can write, as long as I know my stock is bullish, it goes through my strike price, I can relax a little bit, let the decay work for me, and I can still book the same money without without all that headache of, of being like, shit, I missed this, shit, I got all this thing going on. Oh right. my god, oh my it god. Makes oh my it makes it much smoother because time much decay smoother. makes it smoother. Now, when there's blips yes. in that long call, right. it's blips from the delta, but there's yes. also blips from decay or blips in volatility. There's many more factors, and generally, the premium is going to come off in, a, in, a, in, a, in an auction. So the right, if you are in an area where you have a 70% chance in your head that we're going to keep going up, 70-80% right. chance, but you think it might get choppy, in a certain area because there's question marks are we going to go up? We're probably going to go down. There's probably a floor somewhere in the stock. Right. That's the perfect time to write. Right. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so guys, again, you know, the the real takeaway here is is me doing a again doing a strategy that I've been wanting to do because because essentially for me, we've always seen like you we you you've seen Priceline rally a hundred points. In, right. In like six From days, earnings in six days. Right. Uh, or if it's just a regular breakout, you sure. know, and she'll 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 rip for, for 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 six days, and I'll look at some of those puts, and they'll be thirty dollars, forty dollars, fifty dollars, and they'll go to zero. Yeah, you know, and I've seen yeah. that a couple of times, and I've been like, hmm, and I've always looked at it and been like, hmm, right, wouldn't that be? But you know what I mean? But there's risk. Obviously, though. there's risk. Of course, there's risk. I mean, of course, there's risk with the, with with the shit I'm doing anyway. Yeah. Yep. But if I can go about it like that. And and maybe instead uh, have less peace of mind or, or, or the peace of mind and have less like mental fluctuations while I'm in the trade, then maybe I can pull that off easier than I could buying an option at two and going a freak and holding it through all the swings right. and it come out with thirty bucks on it or forty bucks on it and or fifty bucks on you it. You have the great ability to you know? know that there's so much paper at a certain price. Exactly. It's most likely by Friday not going to go through it. Exactly. So you really are a weekly writer. Right. You are a seller of options when you have a direction. All you do is sell calls right. to sell puts. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. Exactly. But if you're wrong being long, you don't have time decay on your side. Exactly. Time decay is against you. Exactly. And especially with these high priced names, the time decay is even greater because it's such a high priced name. Right. And that's in the equation for time decay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So guys, I mean, you know, I'm 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 enjoying it. I'm enjoying all the lessons, enjoying the We're learning. You know, the hedges and all that kind of stuff. We're learning here. So I'm taking my trading, you know, to the next level where I feel like I can book a million dollars in a in a in a year. I can juice that even when I have unlimited leverage. I can I can make I can make more than that. And um and I can make better time and use of of, of 
you know, my, my, my mental state, so to speak. And, yeah. and these days I'm trying to make sure that I don't go on the same crazy path that I did, you know, after July, you know. Well, I mean, it's funny because a guy like me is more afraid of a short option right. than a long, whereas you're more right. afraid of a long than a short. <laughs> exactly. Because your it's ratio weird. is at weird. least two or three to one. <laughs> you know, you got a, a G bar right. <laughs> of longs yeah. versus 100 or 200. And they might both make the same. Right, right. So you're not concerned about two hour long nope. shorts. Nope, not, Gucci not don't at care. all. Not at all, right? Nope. I'm used to being long, as he said. He calls them the G bar, right? Thousand contracts, two thousand contracts, five thousand contracts. And meanwhile, I, I, you know, I can short an option, two hundred contracts, and you're telling me I can make a hundred grand on that trade? Yep. And then to me, I'm like, damn. Especially when you're selling an <laughs> damn so 80, 90 delta put. Right. It's that. I mean, it's beautiful. Right. It really poetry is. emotion. It really is. So, so we'll 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 end on that note, guys. And let's um, uh, have. Oh a yeah. Oh yeah. So, guys, listen. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday, we want to make sure we do have topics here, option specific topics. You know, so whether it's a trade breakdown that you want us, you want uh, uh, him and I to break down, or or, or Peter if he's involved. Um, uh, submit, uh, you know, send us your questions. You tweet know, us something. Tweet us something. Tweet we'll us something. A couple topics. So for Tuesdays, uh, you know, we'll make sure that we have a different topic that we select from you guys. You know, whether it's uh, you know options head more on options hedging, whether it's uh, volatility discussions, or you know, or even the basics. If you want Brian to even base that, break down the basics. Whatever. We'll, we'll take, whatever we'll it take is. Topics. Whatever we'll it out. is. We'll take topics and we'll do it for next Tuesday. We'll send you a T-shirt, maybe. You ain't getting this one, baby. <laughs> you ain't getting this one. All right, guys. Enjoy your evenings. We'll see you later.